this isn't how you raise a soldier country. And even more than that, uh, that even the king should live a life of extreme discipline and despising luxury. For example, Frederick William I, in his political testament, in his advice to his son, Frederick the Great, said that all successful rulers keep God before their eyes and have no mistresses, or rather, whores. Let's just be honest about what they are, Frederick says. And they lead a godly life. So the objective of a king should be to lead a very simple life, not to be like Louis XIV, who had 14 illegitimate children by several mistresses. In fact, uh, this woman here is one of Louis' many mistresses that he kept throughout his time as king. And we all know about the luxury of Versailles and at Louis' court. Uh, this wasn't going to be the case in Prussia. Everything was stripped down and all of the emphasis was on building this disciplined militaristic state. Of course, part of the reason why the soldier king didn't have any mistresses might have been because he just wasn't interested in that sort of thing. He said that the most beautiful girl or woman in the world would be a matter of indifference to me. But tall soldiers, they are my weakness. Yes, that was just said. The soldier king kept a regiment that was known as the Potsdam Giants. Uh, these guys were recruited from all over Europe. And the soldier king just sent people out, go find some tall guys to put in my army. And he marched them around, drilled them, but treated them more like toy soldiers than anything. Uh, he never sent them to battle. Now, Frederick the Great would, but the soldier king never put these guys in battle because these beautiful soldiers would get killed. So a lot of this was just for show, but these guys were really disciplined, really tall, and Frederick William was so obsessed with this that there were mothers in Prussia that would tell their sons, you better stop growing because if you get too tall, the king's going to come get you, put you in his army. Now let's talk a bit about the formation of an absolute estate in Prussia. The soldier king said that everything must be committed except eternal salvation. That belongs to God, but all else is mine. Kind of like they say in the Marines, you can give your heart to Jesus, but dot, dot, dot. Look it up if you're curious, something about something belonging to the core. We've already discussed in another lecture how absolutist rulers had to contend with entrenched institutions that limited their power, such as the church, the nobility, representative bodies, and education. And each absolutist dealt with these institutions a little bit differently. Now, first of all, the church. The Fredericks were Calvinist, and they were governing a predominantly Lutheran country. And what they decided to do was to endorse religious toleration, to at least tolerate Protestants, at least let people be Lutheran or Calvinists. Now, as far as uh, Catholics and Jews, maybe not quite that tolerant uh, until you get to the time of Frederick the Great, but at least Protestant toleration. Now, what does this do? This weakens the state church apparatus. Uh, when there are multiple religions, then you don't have this unifying factor. So people would unify around the Prussian state rather than a single Prussian religion. Now, while Louis XIV decided to put the nobility down a notch, the Frederick decided to cooperate with the nobility to bring them in as partners. These nobles were called Junkers, the most famous of the Junker service nobility being Otto von Bismarck, who was the architect of German unification. And so these guys are brought in as a service nobility to command the military and to serve in positions of civil service. And in return for the nobles serving the kings of Prussia Brandenburg, they were allowed free reign with peasants that were under them and were able to dominate these, uh, these serfs. So the nobility, they're brought in as partners, representative bodies, not so much.
were not a big deal in Prussia. And finally, the education system, which really distinguishes Prussia from other countries. Uh, in the United States today, we take public education for granted. Uh, about 90% of Americans are educated in public schools, but this is a product of Prussian absolutism. Uh, Frederick set up the first system of compulsory public education where everyone